What's up everybody? It's your boy Ryan and this is a Thunder Channel on nootropics and a bunch of other stuff. Something's on my sandal here, hold on. <laughs> Thanks for being with me. So look, I wanna talk about the, uh, the Mediterranean way of eating. Um, I've been doing it for just about three and a half weeks and I've noticed four or five major substantial changes in, in kind of the way that my body responds to it versus how I was eating. I'm gonna explain how I was eating, I'll explain what I'm doing for the Mediterranean diet, um, down to the foods, and try to quantify and understand exactly why some of these positive changes are happening. In the meantime, it sports this broadcast, a couple of nootropic products. Number one, Cortex Stack, powerful pre-made nootropic stack. I mean, look, if you want verbal fluency, mental energy, the, the drive to work, like it should have been called gear, <laughs> get you into gear buy Cortex, do it at livecortex.com or do auto ship, which gets you uh, Cortex shipped to your doorstep every month for the same price at the same time. There's nothing you have to do after you set up auto ship. Do that at livecortex.com. If you're new to nootropics, nootropics ground zero, best uh, option to teach you the ropes, to get you in the place where you understand how to use, stack, and adjust nootropics to get good results. It's a video course, get it at livecortex.com. A little more advanced, on the nootropic side is the nootropics masterclass is another video course that i created take you to the six year plus mark so if you're in a couple years but want to really ascend pretty quickly get the nootropics masterclass uh, if you are a guy that has sexual function that could be better or is terrible or is okay but just needs to go to the next level we just launched the male sexual rejuvenation program. It's many, many years of me diving into what really makes as a guy the sexual function system work and then really, really tailoring protocols to fully, fully optimize it. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one consult, then document generation, and then tailor protocols for you. Really what differentiates it from other sexual protocols are the focus on neurotransmitters and brain chemistry the focus on diet and not the stuff you've typically heard. Something completely different. And a host of other things, get that at livecortex.com. And then we've got uh, consults that are basically tailored to business folks that need to perform at optimal levels in terms of brain function. Three and a half months or six months, those are results-driven one-on-one uh, consults with me. Get them at livecortex.com. So, uh, so I wanna talk about some major things that I've noticed that are different with my body in eating the Mediterranean diet. Um, I'll, get, I'll get to what exactly I'm eating so that folks, if they wanna try this, have an idea of a template to start from and then kind of what foods you're looking at that you know you, you should be eating on this, this type of diet. So number one, um, I have been dealing with for six or so years, seven years call it, uh, LPR, which is basically a, a non-acidic pepsin-based reflux. It doesn't happen every day. Uh, but it'll happen if I either eat too much or if I eat certain types of foods. But there's a supplement regimen, a very simple one, that I use to combat it, to where I basically haven't noticed it for many years. It, it may pop up every now and then, but it's really never an issue. So I really never paid it all that much attention with the exception of a small stint where I tried to aggressively biohack it with tannins and a bunch of other things. So we're talking about Archaeobacter in the small intestine. This happened, by the way, from keto uh, and not feeding and getting the right carbohydrates to the right areas, particularly the large intestine, to maintain a homeostasis of sort of a, you know, a, a gut microbiome, right? The, the, uh, the ecosystem of the small, large intestine. Since eating Mediterranean, the supplements that I take, which are a few, at nighttime, one, once a night, um, when, it's, when it's happening, I haven't had to take as much. I've had to take substantially less of those supplements, and that's significant. What exactly is is happening there? Probably because there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of specific types of carbohydrates in this diet that are able to pass through the small intestine, even feeding the Archaeobacter, but ultimately ending up in the large intestine, where the ecosystem then gets changed there, which reflects on the ecosystem of the small intestine. So that's what I think is happening. So overall, the uh, the root cause, SIBO, Archaeobacter-based, methane-based SIBO, uh, is being dramatically aided um, in a negative way as far as it's concerned from this diet. Very, very interesting stuff. Number two, my energy throughout the day 
has always been like really good for the last like for, for as long as I can remember right it's like I wake up and I'm pumped to wake up and I go and engage in whatever I'm going to do and I, I kind of don't lose energy like at periods of time throughout the day like folks do I just feel good pretty much all the time but eating the Mediterranean diet there's a different echelon of like my ability to focus on things or do things for long periods of time without the presence of chemical modulation on the neurotransmitter side. So in other words, there'll be days where I don't take any nootropics at all, but that I function just like I took nootropics as far as brain performance goes and brain endurance goes. This is really, really interesting to me, really interesting to me, um, and shows that there, you know, there's, there's a likely a degree of micronutrient absorption and uptake and then you know distribution and usability that is happening in this particular diet that I couldn't achieve with just nootropics and that I wasn't getting in my previous diet which by the way was very random it just I mean it was healthy but it just wasn't a very specific diet like the Mediterranean again I'm gonna get to the foods uh, in just a sec so the next thing that I noticed my vasculature okay a very uh, conscious of like my microcirculation and there's there's various ways that you can sort of gauge how functional it is or how what status it is in like laying on your arm for too long <laughs> how long does it take for it to go to sleep that has to do with micro my, my microcirculation your your complexion right what your skin looks like that that has to do with microcirculation among other things your general sort of waking walking energy throughout the day has to do with microcirculation right it's the it's the the efficacy of the flow of your blood in your body and eating this way seems to have dramatically changed my microcirculation in a positive way not that it was bad but again it's a noticeable difference so my brain energy is just different my complexion is different when i do cardio i feel different i feel stronger i recover faster and, and, and look, I mean, it's not uber substantial, but it's noticeable enough for me to make a video about it and be excited about it. Next thing, I sleep better. I sleep better. Now, I sleep seven, eight hours a night, sometimes nine hours a night, right? But it's like little things. I might wake up because my cats are freaking out or playing or something, or I have to go to the bathroom. And then going back to sleep is usually pretty easy, but sometimes it can be a chore. Sometimes it can be a chore, especially if there's stuff on my mind, stuff that's going on in my life. It can be a little bit of a chore to turn a podcast on or listen to something in headphones, and then I get back to sleep. But eating the Mediterranean diet, it's been a lot easier because in those times, my body just feels very clean and centered and like balanced. Like everything just feels really, really good. So it's a lot easier for me to just fall right back asleep. So instead of putting on a podcast, like Rogan or something and listening to it and allowing that to kind of get me back to sleep. I, I, I don't have to do anything. Like I turn my TV off or stay like, or just don't do anything. And then within a couple minutes, I'm right back to sleep. So it's, it's reducing anxiety to an extent, but generally keeping me in a place where I feel really, really clean. I just, my body feels really good and healthy in the middle of the night. Um, so those are the predominant things that I've noticed. And, and then also my mental and visceral libido, which are two different things are, are, markedly higher than prior which is really interesting and i have some theories on, on why that's happening so let me just talk about what i used to be eating and then i'll break down what i'm eating now so my diet was pretty random i would wake up and have some eggs maybe some bacon some uh, corned beef hash and like an english muffin and that was basically my breakfast in the middle of the day i'd probably eat like a colorful salad with some olives and carrots and avocados or something then at night time i would eat um either salmon or chicken or beef with a vegetable, you know, name your vegetable, call it asparagus, and then a tuber. And that was, that was basically my diet. Um, but I stuck to a very kind of uh, limited form of that, where, where like, that's pretty much all I ate for a long time. And then there would be days or nights or whatever where I'd order a pizza. There'd be some times where I'd grab like a really good cheesesteak from a good company that makes really good cheesesteaks. And then there'd be like some times where I'd go out to like a 3 p.m. kind of brunch or something and have ribs and whatever the hell else like, you know, is on the menu that, that seems appealing to me. <clears throat> um, 
and and I haven't been drinking a whole lot of red wine, okay, um, previous to this. So so that's that's where how I used to eat, which sounds like a pretty good diet, right? Pretty okay diet, right? You know, good enough to function pretty good, getting my macro and micros, having them pretty balanced, etc. But the way that I'm eating now is profoundly different from that, and that should. That, that's what I'm attributing to all these major changes. So let me just lay out, you know, kind of what, what a typical day looks like. So the one deviation is I am eating eggs in the morning. So I'm eating two eggs. Uh, but what I'm adding to those eggs are usually green or red peppers, some onions, and then a bunch of turmeric, cilantro, a uh, little bit of garlic powder, and then thyme. These are all kind of traditional spices that are used in the Mediterranean, you know, eating protocols. Uh, I replace the bread with a base bakery made ciabatta bread, like a real a, a real bread, because I was eating English muffins before, which are, for all intents and purposes, processed, right? Um, and that's my breakfast. Usually I'll add a little bit of berries to it, uh, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and, and, and that's it. A couple hours later when I feel like I'm starting to get hungry, I'll eat a small salad. That'll be green leaf lettuce, avocado, couple olives, some feta cheese, uh, some shredded carrots. What else am I putting on there? Raisins, so dried raisins, and then an olive oil based dressing. And by the way, I'm cooking, everything that I cook is on olive oil. Like doing Mediterranean, cook with olive oil. It's anti-inflammatory, it's potently powerful for cardiac function and a host of other things. Um, my snacks, either like some whole grain bread uh, with real jam, like a, like sugar, pectin, water, and strawberry. That's it, no high fructose corn syrup, nothing that, that, that could be anti, or that could be pro-inflammatory in any way. And the most basic of basic of jams. Otherwise, it'll be real bread that I got from a bakery on uh, with hummus, with, with good quality, natural, organic, uh, ingredient-less hummus. You know, hummus that doesn't have, you know, like 10 ingredients or five. It's like, what is the basis of hummus, right? Tahini, etc. chickpeas, right? It's like just basic hummus and I'm eating that. Any other snacks in between, it'll usually be berries of some type or maybe another salad. And then for dinner, what I'm usually doing this is just an example of a dinner, would be cod or salmon, fried for a small period and then baked. And then on the baking pan will either be sliced uh, potatoes, some green peppers, some onions, and maybe a little bit of chopped cauliflower. And then on top of that will be turmeric or cumin, uh, thyme, cilantro, garlic powder, maybe a little cinnamon, spices, a lot of spices. And then baking it, taking it out, eating it, and that's and that's it. And my, my dinner changes like so. So, you know, last night it was a it was a big salmon salad. It was just fried and baked salmon, um, green leaf lettuce. It was avocados chopped up, uh, some olives, feta cheese, uh, shredded carrots, and then um, arugula, arugula over the top of it, and then an olive oil based dressing. And it was just like super tasty and super awesome. And sometimes I put spices on that too. You know, I change my dinner. Um, the, the protein source doesn't change all that much. It's really just cod or salmon, and sometimes just just, just a salad or something. But you know, I'm, I'm changing on the vegetable sides. Like some days I'll do sliced Brussels sprouts with some a little bit of potatoes and then peppers and then onions and then, you know, spices on, on top of it. So, so it, it just, the, the vegetables change. Some days it'll be all of that plus a little squash or minus the Brussels sprouts and then some squash on top of it. Some days it'll be sliced yucca root with peppers, onions, and maybe a little bit of cauliflower and then all the spices on top of it, you know, with my fish or cod, with my salmon or cod. And that's what I've been eating. Uh, at nighttime, after dinner, because I don't, you, I don't like to drink alcohol with dinner, I'm drinking a Cabernet Sauvignon, two glasses, right? If, if it's a Friday night or Saturday night, if there's like nothing going on the next day, I may escalate like three glasses or something, but it pretty much stops there because that's my limit on, on wine um, and, on, and, and alcohol generally. And you have to know your limit on that. Um, 
Cabernet Sauvignon happens to be the most potently anti-inflammatory wine that you can drink uh, among the you know readily available wines that there that there is out there. Um, so so you know it's also somewhat of a blood thinner and kind of helping your blood flow better. It's binding to the uh, to the benzocytes on the GABA A receptor. Uh, but but generally is a is a part of the Mediterranean diet. I mean the the, the blue zones where these folks live a long time. They, they drink wine that moderately though. You know it, there's a point at which you get to diminishing returns and you, it's like you're really canceling the effect if you drink above two or three glasses of, of a red wine at, at nighttime. That's basically it. Okay, so it's improved my energy, and it's improved my microcirculation. It's improved my libido. It's improved my sleep. It's improved my digestion in a way that's actually noticeable, which is just really fucking cool to me. Really cool. I don't anticipate going off of it or eating anything different for for at least the foreseeable future. I'd like to see over time, like it's like eating like this. Like, what exactly can it do in addition to what I'm already experiencing? I mean, I'm three and a half weeks in with some pretty powerful benefits. So like, what else can it do? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And then also in, in trying to understand the research of it, like, look, there are a lot of conditions where not a whole lot touches it with the exception of something like the Mediterranean diet, <laughs> you know, where like it in and of itself drastically modifies someone's physiology in a way which makes them healthier in response to a condition, one condition or the other. I'm not saying do that in response to this condition, so that's why I'm not gonna be specific, but generally, one of the most potently anti-inflammatory diets you could ever engage. Now look, you can go on the web and read and learn Mediterranean style recipes and then start eating them and then just diversify the shit out of what you eat. Like, it's just so much out there. Like, I'm sticking to something so relatively routine and basic and whatever, but it, alone it's very powerful, but there's a lot more out there that you can eat. I eat a lot of olives. I use a lot of olive oil. <laughs> and I'm eating a ton of vegetables, way more than before. Not that I'm not eating, because again, I eat eggs in the morning. I haven't eaten beef in quite some time, but I certainly will bring that in as a small deviation every now and then. But just a lot of vegetables and a lot of spices. I never really got into spices at the degree that I do now, okay? So I'm three and a half weeks in, I'm gonna continue it and whatever I experience from it as far as effects in physiology that are noticeable and measurable, I will talk about them here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Go to livecortex.com, cortex stack, powerful nootropic stack, uh, nootropics ground zero, incredibly useful video course for people that are new to nootropics. Nootropics Masterclass. If you're in a couple years and want to ascend to the six year mark, get that course. If you're a guy that has sexual function that could be better or it's really bad and you want to make it substantially better or it's pretty okay, but you really want to optimize it, we just launched the Male Sexual Rejuvenation Program. It is powerful. It focuses on a lot. It focuses on both the diet side and the neurotransmitter side which is in addition to what people usually talk about and using in these kind of protocols, which is just the testosterone side. That's not all you have to focus on. You gotta focus on these other things too, especially the neurotransmitter side. Get your libido back, EQ back, sex drive back, etc. Get that product at livecortex.com. And then lastly, our consults. You know we work with business folks every day on a one-on-one -on -one capacity, developing highly effective tailored nootropic and supplement protocols to make them perform extremely well. Three and a half months or six months. Do that stuff at livecortex.com. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Talk to you next time.